Hello everyone, Vitek here, and welcome to this first and probably the last gameplay of God of the Poles. So, you probably heard about Palward. So, now get ready for the God of the Poles. I am probably one of the million people that saw, you know, popularity of the Palward and decided to recreate it in other engines. And uh, so I did. So you see now it's, um, you know, my attempt in God at 4. So let's quickly, you know, start this showcase, maybe by just playing a little part of this game. So, yeah. Um, so, of course, you can, you know, pick items. And you have like, you know, task list, so you see that we have like a task to, to build a workbench. So let's press a V menu and you see that, yeah, we have a plank, yeah, but we collected it, but we like rocks. So, um, yeah, there's a merchant, but we don't need it right now. Um, so, oh yeah, you can extract a rock here. Yeah, so let's check our inventory. Yeah, looks like it should be enough. So let's press B. And you see, um, right now I can build a workbench. Yeah, well, let's place it here. Yeah, and our first task in the, you know, in the list is done. So let's go further. So you can see a lot of balls here, um, so yeah, and oh, look at that, there is another workbench, and uh, we have some items here, so let's get it. Oh, we found the pole ball, well, yeah, so <laughs> surprisingly, let's try catching some pole in that case, um, I like this flying one, so let me aim and fun, you know, information, the sound that you heard uh, was me with a spoon, <laughs> so yeah, and the glass, <laughs> so now you know, <laughs> I hope it was worth it. Yeah, so now we cut a pole in the bottom left corner, you see it, so yeah, we can see that this is a phoenix, and it starts level, etc, yeah, we can select it. Um, but yeah, this is power, so let's get the rock. And uh, let's actually try to bully um, the bar here. So let's throw a rock at him. Uh, he, he was angry and ran away. But you know, in power, you can, you know, bully other balls in various ways. And the most interesting one is actually using other balls. So. Let's try using our phoenix where he ran. Hi, he's running. Let's see. Yeah. yeah, you can see it's running away from us. But yeah, let's let's ignore him and uh, let's go further. So we can explore this small little scenery. Uh, there is another guy that I want to interact with. Yeah, this is like a you know, small portion of the world that I decided to populate. And look at that, the, you know time of the day is changing so surprisingly <laughs> you can you know see what it look like in the night yeah so the sky is fully dynamic I'll talk about it more in the later section uh, yeah and I think that's mostly it uh, for this very short showcase so let's go to Godot and explore it a bit more Okay, so let's see how does it look in Godot itself. Um, so let's start uh, with the terrain and uh, maybe let me hide the grass so you see it better. 
Um, so the Terrain is actually a Terrain 3D plugin, which is very popular recently. Um, it's quite new, but have a very good uh, opinions. And I think it's pretty decent and nice performance plugin, so I can recommend. Um, the terrain is like four kilometers square, if I remember correctly. And uh, actually the hate map itself is generated in Gaia in a node-based program. Um, and they see this like a common pattern where new people are like, you know, they want to sculpt, they want to paint their terrains. And the longer you work in game dev, the longer you want to automate those things. So, so, so I did. <laughs> And uh, yeah, this is the result. I think the terrain is quite decent, actually. You know, the details, etc. Of course, I populated only like a small part of the world, um, but still, I didn't have much more time, so that's what I did. And the vegetation itself, uh, it's also an interesting topic because I think not so many people know about this plugin. It's called Gardener, and. Uh, for it to work, you need to have a collision mesh. So there are a few options in Terrain 3D. I will not go into that. Read the documentation. Everything I explain. Uh, I uh, personally use the you know, separate collision shape, but you can enable collisions in the plugin itself too. And uh, with Gardener, you can basically paint uh, your vegetation however you want. So for example, I have this, you know, this is the tree, so I can just uh, click here and uh, yeah, it's painted. And also it supports LOD, so, so you see the farther away I move, the tree is like changing to the lower level version. And the tree itself were made in the treat. So this application looks like from 20 years ago, but uh, believe me from the free ones, I think it's the best one. Um, yeah, the textures I think are made by myself, so uh, yeah. And uh, the impostors are actually baked in Blender. Um, but the plugin that I used, um, it was working only in Blender 3.1, so I will not recommend it, but I will put a link in the video description. The Fewer, the fewer shader is quite fun. So, um, so you can see I have it on my board. And this is actually the Fewer shader plugin by Casper. So it's working pretty nicely and it's working on the animated meshes. So I can recommend it. And a lot of assets are actually made by me, like those rocks. There's actually special shader. So when you move, maybe not on this one actually, but yeah, on those one, like if you move camera closer, there's some more details. So they look pretty sharp, even, you know, in the first person camera. Yeah, and uh, as I mentioned before, the sky, the sky itself uh, is actually from the Clay John newest uh, repo. So those are my parameters that I'm using here. I think they're mostly defaults. The effects that you saw, like, attacking the poles and those things are actually from the VFX sketchbooks repo. It's actually very nice um, solution. So uh, if you're interested in those effects and like how to, you know, particles and how to, how to use them in Godot, um, I can highly recommend it. They are very nice quality. And uh, of course, um, the grass uh, they hidden right now it's my creation. This is actually a geograss. So uh, there is a quad tree of meshes that are instancing each blade separately. And uh, I think it's actually looking pretty cool. So I decided to use it. And I'm really happy that it's working in this semi open world environment. I was pretty, you know, afraid that it will have problems. Uh, of course, it's quite heavy on performance, so you have been warned. And it's not a plugin. And this is like, a, you know, one of the quads in the quad tree. So you can see it. How does it actually look in one 
uh, you know, section. Yeah. Um, the, of course, I use other things. So, for example, for um, for the HUD, I have a few plugins. So, I used a plugin. Well, maybe I will show you my uh, file structure actually. So, add ons. So, uh, you see, I have a you know, ca character controller that I can recommend. It's very easy to you know, integrate in your projects. I have this weird compass on top, but I mostly rewritten it. So, uh, well, <laughs> I still will post a, uh, you know, a link. Um, this is a spatial gardener, so this is the thing that I mentioned before. Uh, and the uh, GLoot is actually the you know uh, assets uh, inventory system. So you see this is this inventory system here. It's really helped me to make things faster. Um, and uh, yeah, I can recommend. Uh, so Phantom Camera is a plugin that allows you to manage cameras. Uh, I wanted to try it, but well, it turns out that I didn't have any need for, <laughs> so I didn't. And uh, the shell for and terrain 3D, so the assets I mentioned before. Um, everything is uh, in terms of uh, user interface is very simple. So I have like you know a few containers, and uh, I you now show the specific things. Uh, that are related to current state of the game uh, and yeah so I think that's all actually so if you are interested in more specific details uh, let me know and uh, I think I think that's all for today so thanks for watching